Lynn Nottage's Pulitzer Prize winning play Sweat is the story of friends who've spent lives working together on the factory floor, but when layoffs loom, trust and friendships erode. The Pulitzer jury called Sweat a nuanced yet powerful drama, reminding audience of the stacked deck, still facing workers searching for the American dream. And joining us now to discuss her play is two-time Pulitzer winner Lynn Nottage. Welcome, Lynn, and congratulations. Thank you. How does it feel to be the first female playwright to win two Pulitzers? It's, well, it, it, feels, it's, it feels very daunting, but it also feels quite wonderful. I, I feel like I'm representing for women. I'm re representing for um, artists of color. Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, I believe Marie Curie is the only other woman to have won two Pulitzers. Which is kind of shocking. Right. There's something but about that which is actually sad. Yeah, which is sad. actually a little sad. <laughs> yes. But, but hopefully, you know, this won't, I won't be the, the, the last in this century. Right. And we're so <laughs> happy for you. Of course, Sweat is being hailed as the first major play of the Trump era. But, of course, you wrote this play or started this play far before he was a viable presidential candidate. So what inspired you? Well, I think I, I went about trying to find stories that I felt were really representative of what was happening in America. And I wanted to go to a city that, a post-industrial city that I felt really spoke to what was happening around um, economic insecurity. And I landed on Reading, Pennsylvania, which at the time in 2011, when I began my investigation, was the poor city of its size in America. And what I found was that there was a large middle class that slowly was being eroded, people who had worked in, in textile factories, who had worked in um, steel mills, who worked in agriculture, who had really invested in the American dream and found themselves um, suddenly without opportunity. And that narrative really, um, their personal narrative is really shifting. And you, here you were tuned into this zeitgeist far before most others in the intellectual community were. Was there anything in maybe the Occupy Wall Street movement, or was there anything that that clued you into this? Well, certainly, it's, it's the cry from Occupy Wall Street that you had a large swath of the population was saying, hey, the 99% are here, we're struggling, and we, we need to be heard. And that's definitely one of the things that that drove me to Reading, Pennsylvania. And also, in, there's a, a filmmaker, Werner Herzog, and he said that the role of an artist is to keep their eyes open when everyone else is just shut. And I think that we is our job is to be first responders, to get in there very early and to reflect and respond. Do you know if those people that you spoke to in Reading have had a chance to see the play? A lot of the people have uh, had the opportunity, which is great. We we took the play to Reading after we closed at the Public Theater, and we did a performance for about 500 people. People were a little nervous, like we were, because we thought, here we are, sort of bringing something to folks who really know the subject matter much better than we do. But at the very end, people stood up and told their stories. They testified. Amazing. And tell, tell us a little bit about your writing process. Once sure. you do this sort of research, what's next? Um, well, I, I spend a lot of time researching or procrastinating <laughs> and sort of um, circling the subject. And then once I do my research, I push it aside and let the characters speak to me. You know, it, it's funny. My goal when I... I I first decided to write the play was to tell the stories of people in Reading and to amplify them. And I think that that's happened. So I feel very satisfied. Do you see having gotten to know these people in Reading and looking at the demographic of many Trump voters, do you see large similarities between those people and the Bernie Sanders supporters? Yeah, I do. I mean, definitely a lot of the people who I spoke to, at least in Reading, Pennsylvania, were early Bernie Sanders um, voters. And some of them sort of shifted their allegiance to Trump and some of them to, to Hillary. I think I think that it's it's a union town. It's a worker's town, and so I think that they tend to gravitate toward candidates who really speak their language. Tell us a little bit about your background and your childhood. Were your parents writers, academics? N well, my my mother was a school teacher. I grew up in, in Brooklyn, and my father was a social worker, and we we are old-time New Yorkers, and my mother was an activist, very invested in the civil rights movement, in, in the feminist movement. Um, she was someone who sort of woke up and decide, um, decided she wanted to do something for um, others. As an inspiration, I draw on her. And you are also energy. a professor at Columbia. I am a professor. Playwriting. Yes, so I am. In some ways, you did yeah. follow in her footsteps. It's, it's, yeah. It's fantastic. Well, Lynn Nottage, thank you so much for coming to see us, and congratulations again. Well, thank you.